3 Bible Verses That Demons Hate Powerful Protection Verses In the recesses of the invisible world, where demons weave their dark plots and spiritual warfare unfold silently, there is a reality that many prefer to ignore. Folklore and horror films may trivialize it, but for those who face hopelessness, who know the cold touch of fear or fight against forces that threaten to steal their joy, the battle is palpable. It's not just a mental weakness, but a conflict that permeates our daily lives, lurking in the shadows and challenging our inner peace. In the midst of this invisible clash, there is a promise of hope and power, waiting to be discovered and released. In the pages of the Bible, often underestimated as mere words, we find verses imbued with an authority capable of making darkness tremble. These verses are not just ancient texts, they are sharp weapons that we can wield with strategic precision against the adversities that surround us. They not only offer protection, but also lead to the breakthrough and transformation we desperately seek in the light. Today, I'm not simply revealing three Bible verses that are often forgotten in this spiritual battle. I'm presenting the unique power that each of them carries and the strategic way to apply them against the forces that oppose us. We will explore practical examples that illustrate how these verses build unshakable confidence within us. This isn't about empty rituals or baseless promises. It's about regaining the strength we are due in this incessant struggle. It's about finding solid protection and a path to personal betterment that begins today, dispelling the fog of uncertainty that surrounds us. The exhaustion we feel, the insidious whispers of doubt that try to eat away at our minds, the temptation to follow patterns that offer momentary relief but leave a lasting void. All of this is part of a deeper conflict, often forgotten in our superficial world. The Apostle Paul understood this deeply when he wrote, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6 verse 12 this is an invisible but relentless conflict that doesn't unfold in epic battles, but rather creeps into the cracks of our days. A persistent discouragement that undermines our motivation, a doubt that erodes the foundations of our faith, and temptations that promise quick fixes but leave an even greater existential void. However, we are not alone in this struggle. It's a conflict where the stakes are high, involving not only our peace of mind, but our very soul. We must not resign ourselves to being prisoners in this invisible war, mere victims of forces we barely understand. The Bible resounds with a forceful answer. We are not helpless. Within its pages we don't just find consolation or comforting stories. We discover a powerful arsenal. Its words are charged with divine power and, when wielded wisely, become our greatest weapon in this spiritual clash. Let me guide you through three of these weapons, verses that penetrate directly into the enemy's strategies. Firstly, a declaration of unshakable protection. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty, Psalm 91 verse 1. Imagine the scorching heat of the desert, its burning rays promising exhaustion, and even the threat of death. Now, visualize a huge rock formation emerging casting a deep, cooling shadow, a sanctuary of relief. This is the picture evoked by Psalm 91. But where is this shelter? What does this protective shadow represent? The answer lies in the word, dwells. It's not an occasional visit or a fleeting glance in God's direction. To dwell means to take up residence, to make his presence the unshakable center of our lives. So what does it mean to rest in the shadow of the Almighty? Imagine it as three powerful forces working in your favor. Protection. The shadow represents a barrier against the relentless heat of spiritual attacks. Persistent anxieties, sudden temptations, accusations that lose their force when you remain in the shelter of God's presence. This doesn't guarantee a life free of problems, but it does promise a divine buffer, a way of mitigating the blows designed to break your spirit. Strength. Rest is not idleness, but restoration. Dwelling in God's presence, it's as if an invisible source feeds your spirit, 
conferring an inner resilience that allows you to stand firm, strengthened by his spirit. Hope. Perhaps the enemy's most insidious weapon is despair, the lie that nothing will change, that the darkness is permanent. But the shadows themselves are a reminder of the light. By dwelling in the shadow of the Almighty, the mere existence of the shadow reaffirms the source of light, a constant reminder of God's power and His promises for your life. This is not an abstract concept. Think of the times when a simple phrase or image has brought deep peace in the midst of a storm, when God's presence has been so tangible that doubts and fears have been dispelled. So, every word of Scripture is not just a record of the past, but a living and effective weapon that we can wield today against the wiles of the enemy, affirming our position and strengthening our faith in the spiritual battle we face. Now imagine that power amplified, multiplied in every word of this verse. But wielding it goes beyond mere casual knowledge. Memorization. Engrave this verse deeply in your mind. When the first waves of doubt or fear arise, you will have at your disposal an instant counterattack to the enemy's whispers. Visualize the protective shadow, feel its coolness envelop you. Reflect on what it truly means to remain in God's presence. Planting this verse deep in your consciousness is just the beginning. Prayer. Use it not just as a plea, but as a powerful declaration. Say it out loud. I dwell in the shelter of the Most High. I rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Let these words transform your prayer from despair to confident defiance. Here's the key. This kind of appropriation doesn't generate instant miraculous changes. True transformation takes place over time. It's a constant process of saturating your mind and heart with the truth of that verse, allowing it to rewrite your inner narrative. Imagine a fortress under siege. A single shell doesn't bring it down, but a continuous barrage weakens its defenses and discourages those inside. So it is in the spiritual battle. Every time you wield the truth of Psalm 91, you strengthen your shelter, reinforce your inner defenses. Now, consider the combined impact of wielding several of these weapons strategically against the specific struggles you face. The next weapon is a statement so powerful, so absolute, that it dismantles any lie the enemy tries to sow. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor any other creature, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 8 verses 38 to 39. This is not naive optimism. The Apostle Paul, who wrote these words, was deeply familiar with suffering, beatings, imprisonment, and the constant threat of death marked his life. Yet, in the midst of it all, he proclaimed this unshakable truth. Note well, he doesn't deny the existence of problems. On the contrary, he boldly lists a whole range, from cosmic forces to our own human ups and downs. What he declares is the absolute certainty of God's love, which transcends any adversity. These words are not just a theological comfort, they are a call to action, a challenge to face our fears with the certainty that we are safe in divine love. Every verse we absorb, every truth we internalize, strengthens our faith and prepares our hearts to withstand the spiritual attacks we face on a daily basis. Nothing can break the unbreakable bond between us and God's love in Christ. Let's explore the various forms of protection this truth offers. Protection from lies. The enemy's attack often distorts our circumstances to convince us that we are worthless. A failed relationship, a persistent illness, a missed opportunity, all are presented as proof that we are unloved, abandoned, or beyond God's reach. This verse acts as a shield against these lies. It boldly proclaims that, regardless of our state, nothing can alter God's unwavering love for us. When the storms of life intensify, it's easy to feel forgotten or isolated. However, this verse reminds us that we are never truly alone. Paul's certainty rests on a love that was demonstrated supremely by Christ on the cross. Knowing that this love is ours, unchanging in the face of any earthly force, gives us a strength that goes beyond our human capacity. 
In the face of the darkness of despair, which whispers that our current reality is permanent, this statement resonates with a cosmic perspective. No aspect of our earthly life, high or low, has the final word. It reminds us that our deepest reality is an indestructible bond with a God whose love is eternal and infinite. This does not diminish our sorrows, but places them within a larger narrative of ultimate victory. So how do we wield this double-edged sword of love and certainty? In the darkest moments, when our own voice falters, let this declaration resonate within us. Every word confronts deception. Let's visualize an unbreakable bond, a powerful chain that neither earthly nor cosmic forces can break. Let it combat the isolation that the enemy tries to impose. When we feel overwhelmed, let's declare this verse out loud. Let's turn it into a defiant proclamation against the darkness. And then, let's go beyond that. Let's dare to thank God for a love that cannot be taken away from us. This love, this certainty, will become our foundation. As we consistently wield this weapon, our perspective gradually changes. We no longer see ourselves as victims of circumstances, but as unwaveringly loved by a God whose purposes transcend our current problems. And let's remember, this is just one facet of the vast arsenal found in God's Word. By strategically combining these weapons, we embark on a profound transformation. Our final weapon comes with a direct and deeply personal promise from God, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41 verse 10 Isaiah spoke these words to a people in exile, surrounded by the memory of their defeat, powerlessness, and what seemed to be abandonment by God. In the midst of despair, God doesn't just offer us abstract theories or distant promises of a better future. He presents us with a declaration full of tangible and immediate power. Let's explore the forces involved here. Protection from fear. The spiritual battle often takes place in our own minds. The enemy seeks to paralyze us with fear. Fear of the future. Fear of failure. Fear that casts a shadow over any hope. Notice how God tackles this head on. Fear not, it's not just advice, but a commandment, a divine challenge against the spirit of fear. But this is not just empty bravado. He follows up with the reason for this fearlessness, for I am with you. God affirms his presence as the ultimate antidote to fear. Feeling dismayed goes beyond worry. It is a state of spiritual and emotional overload. However, God counters this with a powerful promise. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will sustain you. Imagine this as a staggering warrior being prepared and revitalized by an invincible ally. This is not just a boost of self-confidence. This strength comes from the reality of God's empowering presence in our struggles. Hope in the struggle. Note the actions evoked. Strengthen, help, sustain. This verse portrays God as actively involved in our battle. He is not a passive observer. He meets us where we are, offering divine help in the heat of battle. The image of his righteous right hand implies power, protection, and unwavering support. This is fuel for the hope that persists not because difficulties disappear, but because we know that we are never truly alone in them. As with our previous weapons, the power lies in wielding them, not just knowing them. Memorization. Make it a reflex. When fear tries to take over your heart, let these words dissolve the panic. Fear not, for I am with you. Imagine God speaking this directly to you. Visualize his strong, steady hand supporting you as you face uncertainty. Let this contradict the sense of powerlessness that the enemy tries to insinuate. Use this verse to recalibrate your prayers. Instead of listing your fears before God, boldly declare back to him, Fear not, for you are with me. Help me overcome this fear. This practice not only strengthens our faith, but also connects us in a profound way with God's comforting and empowering presence in our lives. In the midst of your struggles, God doesn't just offer vague consolation or distant promises. He gives us declarations laden with immediate and tangible power. 
Let's explore the depths of this transforming truth. By wielding God's words against the darkness, you not only change your stance from one of victim to one of defiant faith, but you begin to forge an identity founded on the certainty of divine love and care. This isn't just about feeling helped occasionally. It's about recognizing yourself as constantly sustained by God's righteous right hand, regardless of the circumstances. Imagine the powerful combination of Romans 8, the safe haven of Psalm 91, and the unfailing promise of divine support. This exemplifies the strategic use of God's word. Each verse becomes a force multiplier, erecting an almost impregnable spiritual fortress around you. True transformation doesn't happen overnight. It's a continuous process of saturating your mind and heart with biblical truth. But as you persist in this, you will notice a profound change taking place within you. I understand the weariness you may feel. Perhaps there is a heaviness in your spirit that no amount of distraction can dispel. Perhaps your prayers seem to come up against invisible barriers and darkness continues to hover. Or maybe, deep down, there is a spark of doubt, a fear that you are alone in this battle. But I want you to hold on to a simple but revolutionary truth. These struggles are not evidence of weakness, nor do they demonstrate God's indifference. Remember the weapons we have. Romans 8's declaration that nothing can separate you from Christ's love, the safe haven of Psalm 91, and the comforting promise that God will fight alongside you, sustaining you in your weakest moments, Isaiah 40 verse 10. These are not just empty words. They are divinely forged truths, tested and perfected over the centuries by those who came before us. They carry a power that transcends time an energy that resonates against the lies the enemy tries to sow in your path. Even if you are not yet firmly anchored in the faith, remain persistent. Memorize these verses. Dive deep into them. Turn them into a battle cry echoing in the darkest parts of your heart. Allow them to slowly seep into the places where hope and strength seem far away. Because the true power of God's word is not in instant solutions or the sudden disappearance of pain. It is in the patient building of a resilient spirit. Become someone who, even when downcast, stands up unshakably, declaring with conviction, I am loved unshakably. I am divinely protected. I am strengthened eternally. One day, you will realize that this declaration is not just self-help. It is a defiant roar born of the Spirit of God at work within you, a roar that makes the darkness tremble. If you're ready to fight, fight with everything you've got, for your peace, for your unshakable faith, for the light that is rightfully yours. Join him. For the battle may be long, but the final victory is certain. Thank you for watching this video. Leave your like and subscribe to the Living Hope channel on YouTube. Activate notifications by clicking on the bell to receive other publications.